Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to the White House. Thanks for being here. Before I take your questions, I wanted to mention uh, something that I think is uh, breaking now, as Wolf Blitzer would say, and that is that on Sunday, May 26, the President will travel to the Oklahoma City area to see firsthand the response to the devastating tornadoes and severe weather uh, that have impacted the area on Sunday night and Monday. He will visit with affected families as well as thank first responders. The President has directed his administration to provide all available resources to support the response led by the Governor and her team. More detail on the President's travel will be released when available. With that, I'll go to your questions. Nedra. Thank you for the questions, but first, happy birthday. Oh, you're very kind. Thank you. Sure there's no 29 forever. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, first, on the IRS controversy, given that you all have pledged your full cooperation with the investigations on Capitol Hill, what's um, the White House response to Lois Leonard taking the Fifth Amendment today? Let me say that, as you heard from the President, uh, immediately after the release of the Independent Inspector General's audit, uh, he is absolutely committed to finding out everything that happened here, finding out who's responsible for the failures, holding them accountable, and uh, ensuring that the IRS takes steps uh, so that this will never happen again. Uh, as you know, uh, within the immediate immediate aftermath of the release of that report, uh, Secretary Liu, acting on the President's direction, accepted the resignation of the acting IRS Commissioner, and the President appointed a new uh, acting IRS Commissioner. Uh, as you also know, the uh, responsibilities that Secretary Liu has assigned to Danny Werfel in that job uh, through Secretary Liu, uh, the President has, rather, through Secretary Liu, include uh, within 30 days uh, Commissioner Werfel reporting back to the President and to Secretary Liu about progress made in three areas. One, ensuring that staff act who acted inappropriately are held accountable. Two, uh, examining and correcting any failures in the system that allowed this behavior to happen. And three, uh, taking a forward-looking, systemic view uh, of the organizations, uh, the agency's organizations. So uh, the President has directed these actions to be taken at the IRS. Danny Werfel, the new acting commissioner, starts today. Today is his first day. That 30-day review begins today. Additionally, we have made clear that we are uh, cooperating with and will continue to cooperate with uh, congressional oversight. That's an important component uh, in a situation like this. And the Department of Justice, the Attorney General, has announced a criminal investigation into this matter. So you see two separate branches of government in three different areas uh, working to find out what happened to find out who's responsible for the failures, the clear failures, the inappropriate behavior, the improper conduct, to hold them accountable, uh, and to ensure that uh, procedures are put in place so that it doesn't happen again. How can you find out what happened if a person who's in Ms. Lerner's position is taking the fifth before Congress? As far as the President is concerned, and I would assume this is true of Congress, and I am assuming it's true of the Department of Justice, uh, there is a commitment here to get to the bottom of what happened. and. Uh, I can assure you that the President intends to do that. Um, can I talk to you also about the investigation into Benghazi um, and the report that there um, are five suspects that are under around-the-clock surveillance? Um, some lawmakers are raising concerns today that the U.S. might uh, lose these suspects as they're being monitored to collect more evidence. Does the White House share that concern? We have seen the report, and I would refer you, of course, to the FBI on the status of their investigation, which, as you know, is ongoing. What I cannot dis uh, while I can't discuss rather, rather the specifics of that ongoing uh, investigation or the internal deliberations related to it, uh, I can uh, say what the President said on the day after those attacks. Quote, make no mistake, we will work with the Libyan government to bring to justice the killers who attacked our people. Uh, and uh, I would also point you to uh, something that the Attorney General recently said, uh, which is that we have made a very substantial progress in that investigation. The President's committed, as he made clear from day one, to two things, finding and bringing to justice those who killed four Americans. Two, making sure that the failures that uh, led to the deaths in terms of security uh, of four Americans be corrected. Uh, and he is, uh, through the FBI investigation that he ordered up, uh, ensuring that the first objective is achieved and through the process 
that he uh, instituted through the Secretary of State and the Accountability Revo Review Board, ensuring that uh, the second objective is being achieved. Uh, he is also following through on that sec second objective by calling on Congress, as you heard him say recently, uh, to ensure that there is funding available uh, to upgrade our security at our diplomatic facilities around the world. Is it his preference or his direction that the um, investigation and the, the justice be brought through the civilian courts? I w will tell you simply that when we succeed in capturing suspected terrorists who pose a threat to the American people, uh, our other critical national security objective is to maintain a viable authority to keep those individuals behind bars. The strong preference of this administration is to accomplish that through prosecution, either in an Article III court or a reformed military commission. Uh, with regards to the disposition of this specific investigation, uh, to the progress being made, I'd have to refer you to the FBI, but that has been our position. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that. Yeah, I, I, this is how I chose to spend it. <laughs> Lucky you. Uh, I, you know what? I agree with that sentence. On immigration, yesterday um, the President released a statement saying that the immigration bill that passed out of committee reflected his principles, but that he hoped it would be improved mm -hmm. uh, in the amendment process. What improvements is he looking for? Well, I, what I think he has said all along is that uh, he had some, you know, bottom line principles that were uh, articulated uh, in the proposals that were put forward online and presented to you and the public uh, that have guided uh, what he has said about immigration reform, comprehensive immigration reform throughout this process. And he has said, uh, and he has made clear in that statement again last night, that the a measure that passed out of committee last night uh, with a bipartisan vote uh, does reflect those principles. He has also said that he does not expect that uh, in a bipartisan process, uh, that, in, that, that is dealing with a matter of the magnitude of comprehensive immigration reform, that he is going to get everything uh, exactly as he would write it. And he doesn't expect that anyone in this process will feel when it's over that he or she has gotten everything uh, that he or she wanted, uh, or that the bill emerges exactly as they would have written it. Uh, but he will, of course, uh, as we work with Congress, uh, as this process moves forward, uh, work to have the bill reflect as closely as possible what he believes uh, are important objectives. Can you be specific about what else he would like in terms of improvement? Well, I think, uh, you know, there are, there are some issues. I mean, I think you know that he supported uh, the, uh, uh, that he supports an amendment regarding uh, the rights of LGBT uh, individuals. Um, uh, and he made that clear, I think, in answer to a question he took uh, on his uh, trip to Latin America. And, uh, and, and, and this, is, this is not limited to that he specific that issue. Point. Well, I think he's made clear that he supports that and uh, would like to see Congress support that. Uh, he's also made clear that uh, he doesn't expect to get everything he wants in this bill. Uh, doesn't mean he won't fight for everything he wants, but he understands that compromise means not getting every single thing that you want. Uh, but the process cleared a significant hurdle last night. and. Uh, in an otherwise busy news environment, uh, it's important to note that uh, a, a, a major objective, a major bipartisan objective, uh, has been uh, making significant progress in the Senate as well as the House uh, and cleared that signif uh, significant hurdle last night. There's more work to be done, to be sure. We are not there yet, but that is something uh, that the President believes needs to be noted that the senators responsible for that progress need to be commended for, uh, and that uh, serves as a useful reminder of the fact that you know, we are capable here in Washington when we focus, when we work together, when we accept that we're not going to get everything we want if we want to achieve something in a bipartisan way, we can do big things. And we've done it before, and last night's success coming out of committee demonstrates that we can do it again. Mm -hmm. uh, we talked. You've talked a lot in the briefing room about Kathy Bumler and how people were informed. Can you mm -hmm. say how many people on the senior staff were included when she when she informed people? I, I, you know, I want to say in that in, in in response, I think Hans and some other questions here. You know, we have endeavored to provide a great deal of information to you very quickly, and uh, the 
in a situation like this, we face a choice that when we have a ton of incoming questions, legitimate questions, you guys are doing your job. As I said, an answer to a question from Mark, I believe, last week. You know, the, the, this kind of environment, when there's a lot of news stories, there are a lot of legitimate questions out there, it's part of our democracy, and it's, and it's a great part of our democracy. And the approach we take is we get the information to you that we have as soon as we can. And we try to get that information to you as quickly as possible and as comprehensively as possible. Now, quickly and comprehensively are not objectives that always meet. And our approach is uh, we get the information we have to you, and as we get more information, we fill in the details. And if it turns out that the information, that, uh, new information we have uh, requires a cor correction, we do that. That's what I did on Monday when it came to the so-called timeline. Uh, so you guys, you know, we have a team here that works really hard at trying to anticipate the questions you're going to ask. Uh, the problem is there are a lot of you, and you're good at your jobs, and you're smart, and we almost invariably do not anticipate every question that you ask. Uh, so uh, sometimes we don't have the answers, and sometimes we need to go back and get them. And, uh, but overall in this effort, I think that what the information we provided to you shows is that uh, in response to the notification that people received about the uh, pending completion of an independent inpe inspector general's review of uh, uh, inappropriate activity uh, by IRS personnel. Uh, a decision here was made to wait until that report was finished before any action or any comment was made. Uh, because the cardinal rule here, even though it can be inconvenient uh, from a communications point of view or even a political point of view, is that you don't intervene. You don't prejudge. You don't use the weight of this podium or this building or the presidency uh, to get ahead of the kind of uh, independent investigation that this particular IG audit represents, or in the case of some other matters we've talked here about, uh, criminal investigations uh, that take place uh, under the aegis of the Department of Justice. So, uh, fulfilling your details, my, my question was, can And here's you, what I'm going to tell you. Can you tell there, us? But here, uh, no, no, and I, and I just wanted to say that, because I, I, I think it's important that, that uh, you know, there's been some legitimate criticisms about how we're, how we're handling this. And, uh, and, and I say legitimate because I mean it. But uh, we are endeavoring uh, to pursue those two objectives in, in an environment that really never has existed before in terms of the speed of information flow, uh, the rapidity with which uh, information is conveyed and then released. Uh, we, are, we are working to get you everything we can as quickly as we can and as comprehensively as, as we can. And the alternative, of course, is to, uh, and, it, and it may be a better approach, uh, you and others can decide, is to then say, look, I can't answer any of these questions until uh, later, and then we can spend all our time trying to get uh, everything that we know that we can find, and then waiting, sometimes hours, days. Uh, but the demands of the news environment make that very difficult. So we, we, you know, we take the path we, uh, we've taken and uh, accept that it's got some uh, potholes in it and, and, and diversions that aren't always uh, uh, enjoyable. Having said that, in answer to your question, here's what I can tell you. The, the, as you know, there was an initial communication to uh, uh, a lower level person in the White House Counsel's Office through email just as part of a number of uh, updates on the status of a number of Inspector General matters that included uh, reference to this Inspector General audit coming to a conclusion. That was, I believe, whatever I said, April 16th, 15th, yeah. Then, uh, but the White House counsel herself did not find out until April 24th. She then notified uh, some members, uh, but not all, some members of senior staff. I, I can't tell you because she, she notified some. I can't account for every conversation that might have been had outside the White House mess. I don't, I can't tell you how many people knew. What I can tell you is she alerted the chief of staff, deputy chief of staff, Obviously, others in her office knew. Uh, and from everything we've gathered and all the evidence shows, uh, the, whether it was April 16th or April 24th or May 10th when the, the news broke, uh, our approach to this has been the same, which is that uh, we should not do anything. We should not act on this information until the report is finished, the independent inspector general's audit is completed. Uh, and that's the approach we took. And there's been criticism of that. I think it was the right call, personally. But obviously, others have different opinions.
Yes. Okay. Well, we appreciate your respect for the free press. And uh, in that, <laughs> it's it. Well, it's sincere. I think I think you know that. But go ahead. In that spirit, um, in the president's quest for uh, balance between freedom of the press mm -hmm. and prosecution of potential criminal leaks, and in the interest of transparency. Would he ask his Justice Department to release the names of all reporters and all news organizations whose phone records have been subpoenaed, who are currently being monitored, or who are in any way being investigated as part of any potential leaks investigation? It, it's a very interesting question. And, and no, seriously, I, I, here, here's, here's the challenge it presents, is that that would be suggest, I mean, the, the action that you're suggesting any president might take would be to actively involve himself or herself uh, any president uh, in an ongoing criminal investigation. And uh, the consequences of doing that are potentially enormous. And uh, that's why it's very difficult when you talk about ongoing activity to suggest that the White House or the president should intervene or take action. What I can tell you is what I told you yesterday, and that is that the president, uh, that I've spoken with the president about this issue. Uh, and I've spoken to him about it uh, generally in terms of his views on uh, press freedoms, uh, the First Amendment, the need for journalists to do their jobs, uh, and uh, on the question that I think I had been asked uh, on an earlier day in re uh, re with regard to one of these specific, specific cases, but then extracted not to have, not uh, so that it did not pertain to a specific case, uh, you know, should the president's view is that, you know, when, if you were to ask him, should a, a reporter ever be prosecuted for doing his or her job, the answer in his view is no. And, uh, but, like, there is also, well, there, there's also a balance here. And I think that everyone involved in this, uh, in these cases, has, ha, who has thought about it and written about it uh, in a thoughtful way, or talked about it on television in a thoughtful way, recognizes that there are real issues here when we talk about our secrets. And as I mentioned the other day, if if there were no consequences to divulging highly sensitive classified information, then we might as well not have it. We might as well not have uh, secrets. And no, well, no, but but, but I'm but but so there but that but so there has to be a, a mechanism by which we uh, ensure that national security information that is highly sensitive, the the divulgence of which could could have enormous and detrimental consequences uh, is protected, and there has to be an enforcement mechanism to that. I think that, I know that's this President's view, I, I, I believe it's been the view of uh, his predecessors. It is also his view that, that uh, we need to ensure that reporters are able to conduct investigative journalism uh, freely, and that uh, they are not prosecuted for doing their job. Uh, and I think that, again, broadly speaking, not commenting on specific cases because I cannot and should not, uh, that uh, there are procedures uh, in place uh, that uh, deal with this issue, as I understand it, and there should be more done in the President's view. And that's, that, and that's why uh, he supports a media shield law, and that's why he, you know, he thinks, as I said yesterday, that, that, uh, that this conversation is important to have and that, and that the broader discussion uh, is important to have and that the questions surrounding these issues are legitimate and that this is one of these issues that he believes uh, should be discussed. So you just stated the president's preference mm -hmm. that the, no reporter should be prosecuted mm -hmm. for doing their job. So would it be the president's preference, not intervening, but would it be the president's preference that the Justice Department release the names of news organizations and reporters. You're, at, you're, you're saying that it's not a direction. I, 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 look, I understand, and it's 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 a smart way to ask the question, uh, but I can't suggest that the president would, as a matter of preference or action, who intervene. Do their jobs if they don't know whether they're being investigated while they're doing it. How can they fairly mm -hmm. ask people to share information if? these people are going to lose their jobs, their livelihood? Well, I mean, the second part of your question, look, I think that any of us who works uh, for the federal government and who has uh, been cleared for access to classified uh, information is, is uh, we have a public trust not to violate and, and divulge that classified information. And, and the decision to do that is a decision uh, that 
should carry consequences. I think most and Americans would not know if they're being monitored. Uh, again, I I believe, and I know the president believes that there uh, there needs to be uh, adequate provisions in the law that allow for the press to operate freely. And that is reflected in his support for the Media Shield Law. It's reflected in what he has said. It is also the case, Jessica, as I've, I've tried to be expansive about in, in a way that pushes right up against the line here, that he uh, believes that this discussion is important to have. And he believes that the questions being asked now are worth asking. Mr. Carl. Hey, uh, happy birthday. Thank you, sir. Um, so I appreciate fully your, your point about not being able to interfere mm -hmm. with investigations. I just want to try to understand the, the limits of presidential power in this, in this case. Um, the president would prefer that reporters not be prosecuted for doing his job. It is his view that reporters should not be prosecuted. Exactly. Um, and, and if um, he knew that such a thing was going on at the Justice Department, if there were cases that went over that line, would he have any power to, to intervene, he, or, or would the fact that those are ongoing investigations mean that he Well, I'm not aware, I mean, again, I, based on uh, publicly available information that any reporter has been or is being prosecuted. But what I would say uh, is that, of course, he could not or should not intervene directly in such a hypothetical case. The president uh, can set policy for his administration, and he can have policy discussions with his administration and with Congress, uh, especially if, that, if, if policy considerations require legislation. Uh, he has done that, and he will do that. Uh, but, but the hypothetical you set up, I think the answer to that is, is no, uh, because it would be inappropriate uh, to do that. Even if those prosecutors in the president's view were abusing that power that they have? Well, again, this is, it's a hypothetical that, that isn't really germane to what we know now. And uh, he, he obviously believes that <coughs> investigations ought to be conducted properly, that rules and procedures ought to be followed. Uh, and uh, in general, as I've said, believes that the press needs to be accorded significant freedom in doing its job. And then on the IRS, is the president comfortable? Uh, I know there's still this 30-day review that's just starting. There's still a criminal investigation. But did he, does he feel, knowing what we know now, the right people have been held accountable at the IRS? No. He believes that we need to find all the facts. And I'm not saying that, that we know what all those facts are yet, but he believes that the inspector general, the independent inspector general, uh, conducted an audit, uh, identified clearly that uh, inappropriate activity was taking place that was wrong. Uh, and it should not have happened, regardless of the motivation. Uh, and he believes, and that is why he has uh, insisted that what's taking place take place, that the 30-day top-down review be instituted. Uh, he believes that we need to find out who's responsible for the uh, failures at the IRS uh, and to hold them accountable. And, but we need to get the facts before we uh, make judgments about who's accountable. Uh, but he's insisting that that take place and that this move expeditiously, concurrently, as we speak, there is congressional oversight being undertaken. Uh, there are senior administration officials participating in that congressional oversight. We will cooperate uh, with all legitimate congressional oversight, uh, as we have in the past. And we think that's entirely appropriate. We also note that the Attorney General has announced a criminal investigation into this matter. So I think that uh, you know, folks out in the country can look at the response from both the congressional and executive branches of government here. and, and uh, at least recognize that there is a united sense of seriousness about this problem and the need to find out what happened, to hold people accountable, uh, and to put in place measures that ensure it doesn't happen again. And you don't think Republicans are politicizing this? No, look, as I said yesterday, and I want to be clear because I think some of it got, like my first answer to Major was uh, reported and then not the second answer was is, let me be clear, the President believes the uh, activity here the actions here were wrong and inappropriate. He wants to get to the bottom of it. He wants people held responsible if they are responsible. Uh, I think it's also clear, as others have reported, that uh, there has been some attempt to politicize this. I think that, generally speaking, as I've said, congressional oversight from both parties is wholly appropriate. The President believes that. Uh, you know, but you know, there's been some analogies thrown out and some other uh, characterizations made, you know, some accusations that are unfounded that are backed up by zero evidence that I think represents some attempts to politicize this. But that is not to, uh, making that observation in this case is not to dismiss the severity of what uh, we know based on the IG report. And the President, uh, as I think you've heard and seen, uh, is not happy about it and he wants action taken. Major. Uh, Mr. Schultz, 
Gentleman said in testimony today, when asked about as many visits to the White House, the White House logs have him coming about 118 times in 2011. Did he discuss the ongoing situation with the IRS with anyone here at the White House? He said, not to my memory. <coughs> have you here in the White House asked everyone who might have been involved if there was any conversations anyone in this building had with anyone at the IRS in the relevant years mm -hmm. about well, this pending matter? I have obviously seen what you just reported that uh, former Commissioner Shulman in sworn testimony says that he does not, he did not, to his recollection, talk to anyone at the White House about the handling of 501c4 applications. And I certainly have no information that, to the contrary that would contradict that. I think he was also asked if uh, he would have been directed to uh, have the IRS participate in this activity, and he said no. And I obviously have no information to contradict that. Uh, you know, the, 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 an IRS commissioner appropriately has uh, or his designees has meetings uh, on matters of policy all the time, uh, and, but not discussions about enforcement or applications for tax-exempt status. And, uh, you know, again, I have absolutely zero evidence to suggest that he's wrong in that assertion. In, in your process here in the White House, as you gather information, have you asked that question of everyone in the senior staff? Well, I, mean, I, I, I again, I, I can tell you, and I think I would point you to my explanation for how we are trying to answer all the legitimate questions that we've been asked here, uh, that I certainly have no uh, evidence to the contrary, you know, finding you know, the absence or, or finding, you know, proving a negative can be difficult, obviously, but, you know, he has testified uh, to that effect. The IG, him, uh, Inspect Inspector General himself has said that in his audit, uh, he found no indication, no evidence of. Uh, he didn't ask anybody here at the White House. Well, I know, but he, for the people who actually, for the activity itself, he said that there was no evidence of uh, outside influence or pressure from higher ups. Again, that's his finding, independent Inspector General. There is additional uh, investigating being done by Congress, by the Department of Justice, by the IRS. Uh, but I have no, I have no, and we have no information that, that contradicts what former it, Commissioner it, Shulman it, has testified the, uh, to. The testimony of Mr. Shulman, uh, mm -hmm. Stephen Lynch, uh, a Democrat from Massachusetts, was expressing some frustration about inability to get answers, not only related to that, but to Lois Lerner. And he said, if we can't get answers, this inevitably will lead to calls not just from Republicans but from Democrats for a special prosecutor. I know the President said last week he doesn't believe that's necessary. Mm -hmm. Is that the permanent position of the White House, that it will never be necessary? That's a, that's a hypothetical. What I would say is, well, we intend to get answers. We intend to get answers. The President insists that we get answers. Uh, Congress rightly insists that we get answers. I expect independent criminal investigations, so I haven't had this conversation, but I expect that the Attorney General and those who will work on the investigation at the Department of Justice uh, expect to get answers. And again, I think you have a 30-day top-down review at the IRS with new leadership. You have congressional oversight. You have Department of Justice <coughs> investigating. I think that demonstrates the seriousness that both branches of government uh, uh, are w with uh, the seriousness with which both branches of government here are addressing this matter. And I don't think that there's any indication, given that seriousness, given that determination to get to the bottom of this, to get the facts, and to hold people accountable, uh, that there's any reason to uh, take that step. And that's the, the President's president view, as he said last week. Will the President re revisit that at, if think, Congress proves well, I mean, incapable or frustrated with its ability to get answers? Major, I would simply say that he expects results, he expects answers, and he has put in place uh, a process uh, that will uh, hopefully fulfill that objective. There is another process in Congress that we are co cooperating with that uh, we believe uh, should have that as, a, as, as its objective, and there is a separate <coughs> criminal investigation undertaken by the Department of Justice. Before I let you go, there's a report in uh, Germany today that German intelligence now has completely reassessed. Okay, so when I said that there are sometimes questions that we do not anticipate, I'm pretty sure this right. is one of them. Well, no, 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 it's just an assessment of, uh -huh. of Syria and the Civil uh -huh. War, and its assessment is that Assad is in a much better position, and that his armed forces have inflicted considerable losses on the rebels, that their own disorganization, which is well understood, is increasingly a problem, and they now predict that Assad is more than likely to hold on. Two questions. Would you and this government disagree with that assessment, that Assad is in a stronger position than he was, say, six months or 12 months ago? And even if you don't agree with that, is there a question now about the efficacy of the entire U.S. policy there, if, in fact, Assad is able to hold on? Well, I have not seen the 
German assessment uh, that you referred to. Uh, and I don't know uh, whether it is our assessment that Assad is stronger now than he was a month ago or six months ago or weaker. I mean, clearly he is significantly weaker than he was two years ago. Uh, and in that time, the opposition has uh, gotten significantly more organized. Uh, it has received assistance uh, from a variety of places, including from the United States. Uh, and our efforts to assist the opposition, working with our partners and allies, continue. Our efforts with uh, the international community to, and with the opposition uh, uh, towards implementing the Geneva Communique continue, because we believe that uh, ultimately there has to be a political transition, uh, and that the sooner that process begins, the better and that that process has to result in a post-Assad Syria. There is no question that Bashar al-Assad uh, continues to butcher his own people, to uh, take brutal actions uh, as he clings on to power. And uh, there is no question, as I talked about yesterday, that Hezbollah, for example, is assisting him in that effort. And I think that demonstrates uh, the kinds of friends that Bashar al-Assad has in the world. Uh, and we've made clear our views on that. Uh, that is why we have stepped up our assistance. That is why we have stepped up our humanitarian aid. That is why we have stepped up uh, our efforts to bring about a political transition. Uh, but this is, this is no question this is a difficult it's, situation and that- It's relevant because one of the decisions before the President is to whether to step up the movement of arms to mm -hmm. the rebels. And if they're losing, there are vast policy implications for the U.S. government to make that decision. If they think they're going to lose, why would you make that decision in the first place? It's relevant, it seems. No, I think it, that's, I think that's, uh, look, it, this is a, a, a difficult challenge. And I think your question is, 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 is excellent. I do not know if it is the assessment, if that, the assessment that uh, the opposition is losing is one we share. I don't, I'm, I'm not sure that that's the case. But it is definitely uh, a, a brutal environment there. And uh, Assad continues to cling on to power. When we review our options, and when the President reviews our options, and he reviews all options, including the question of whether or not to provide uh, lethal assistance to the opposition, we have to look at all the factors. We constantly review that option. Uh, to this point, we have made the policy judgment that that is not the right course to take. And we've had really interesting discussions in this room and elsewhere about, uh, you know, the, the, uh, that you have to look at the potential consequences of uh, making a choice like that and, and make sure that if you were to make a choice like that, that you were doing it in a way uh, that helped bring about the policy objective you seek. Uh, because this is a very fraught business, as you know. And we've talked about composition of the opposition and the need to examine that. We've talked about uh, whether introducing more <coughs> arms into an incredibly violent situation will, in fact, help bring about uh, a, uh, the political transition that the Syrian people deserve. Uh, we look at that. Uh, which is not to say that this option doesn't remain on the table. It absolutely does. Uh, but I think that the approach that we've taken has uh, been one that has uh, always looked at the potential consequences of these kinds of policy decisions. And, and that's why we uh, have stepped up our aid, have provided aid directly to the opposition, directly to the Supreme Military Council, um, uh, but why we have uh, uh, you know, make it made the decisions about what we're not providing to this point that we have made. Thank you, Major. Yeah. Jay, on uh, back on justice, um, since you say the president feels so strongly about the press freedoms, mm -hmm. why not take a more specific action? Write a letter to the attorney general from the president saying, "I'm not going to interfere with criminal investigations. Not going to get into individual details. Mm -hmm. But my principle, the principle of this administration, is we should not be surveilling reporters. We should be protecting their rights. Why, why can't you put that in writing?" Well, first of all, what, what you said is not specifically what I enunciated yesterday um, in terms of th there, well, there is obvious. Well, okay. I mean, I, I did say that, and I, speaking for him, I said that, reflecting actually a direct conversation I had with him, I said that. And, and I, I think it's fair to say that since the President believes this is a conversation worth having, and he believes that these are legitimate questions. Uh, and that if we remove them from the specifics of this case uh, so that he can talk about them, uh, that uh, he, he believes that he would, that he, he would participate in that conversation. But I, I don't have any 
I don't have a no. Well, this, and yet this is going on in his own administration, and it appears. Well, I think we have to be careful about what this means, okay? Well, and and we have workers reporting that it was more than just James Rosen's phones that were mm -hmm. being looked at by the government. Mm -hmm. So he's, the president says one thing, his administration appears to be doing something else. Well, no, I don't think that's the case. Again, I can't specify, uh, uh, speak to a specific criminal investigation. I can speak to the fact that publicly available information ha has indicated that that particular investigation is over uh, and uh, that uh, charges related to that investigation that will be brought have already been brought. So there's that. So that, and again, that's commenting on publicly available information. More broadly, I think that uh, you know, t we can't comment on the specifics of an ongoing criminal investigation. There's the other matter that was uh, discussed a lot last week and earlier this week, um, and uh, appropriately so, uh, because as I think we've learned from these public reports, published reports, and others, you know, one of the issues here is that when there are leak investigations. Investigations of the uh, improper disclosure of classified information tends to mean an investigation, at least in part, into some portion of an administration. So, of course, the, uh, the White House cannot or should not, the President cannot or should not, insert himself or itself into that process because that would, at, at the very least, create the appearance uh, of interfering. But the President does believe the broader discussion needs to be held. He does believe that there are important policy issues here. Uh, he's made that clear in his views on legislation, and uh, you know I'm sure he looks forward to having that conversation in the future. Uh, on the IRS, the president said he was outraged last week by the IRS scandal. Is he outraged then that Lois Lerner is taking the fifth? Since he, you said oh, repeatedly today he wants answers, is mm -hmm. he outraged that she's taking the fifth? But I can't speak to any individual's decision about uh, how they'll approach congressional hearings. What I can tell you is that the president will not be deterred. Uh, in the effort to find what happened here and who is responsible. He does not expect that Congress will be deterred uh, in its pursuit of what happened here and finding out who is responsible and insisting that those responsible be held accountable. He does not expect, again, independent and criminal investigation, but he does not expect, and nor do I, that the Justice Department would be deterred in pursuit uh, of finding out that information. So, uh, you know, this, the President has made clear what he thinks needs to happen here. He's made clear how uh, seriously he views this misconduct. And uh, he has put in place a process at the IRS that will, uh, as its purpose, gather more information and more facts to find out who is responsible and to ensure that they're held accountable uh, and that, uh, to ensure that procedures are put in place that it doesn't happen, so that it doesn't happen again. And he, uh, you know, we, have, we are and will continue to cooperate with congressional oversight into this matter. Uh, and with any investigation that the Justice Department might be engaged in. So you say the President wants to hold people accountable in this scandal. Why then is Lois Lerner still working at the IRS today? Well, I think it's important to find the facts before you hold people accountable. That's why the President, through Secretary Liu, has instructed the new Acting Commissioner on the job today uh, to institute a 30-day review. Uh, we have, as our starting point, the Inspector General's audit uh, clearly identifies improper conduct, the improper targeting of specific conservative groups in the application process for nonprofit status, clearly inappropriate. Uh, and now we need to find out who's responsible. Uh, we need to be clear about those facts, and then we need to take action to make sure that those people are held accountable. Last thing on, uh, you mentioned immigration making some progress. Other second term items for the president have not made progress, gun control, budget deal. Mm -hmm. He's been frustrated by those, but he is making progress on immigration reform. Is there any frustration here inside the White House that he's making progress on this big item? It's being overshadowed by the IRS, by the, by the questions about some of these other stories. No, I think that uh, we absolutely recognize that the IRS issue is uh, significant and deserves attention. Uh, we absolutely understand that some of the reporting on what are apparently criminal investigations uh, are of uh, interest and in particular interest to reporters uh, and absolutely valid questions about that as I've said. So that's an environment that's legitimate and uh, we understand. But what he has made clear to all of us who work for him here and who work uh, uh, for the American people here is that there's an agenda that 
the American people expect us to act on. And in the case of comprehensive immigration reform, that is, has become, uh, rather rapidly, a bipartisan objective. And that is a good thing. And I think it demonstrates that even in this environment, uh, which at times can be fractious and partisan, that there is the potential for significant progress on a difficult issue uh, in a bipartisan manner. And the President believes that those senators and, and also those House members who have worked on this issue Democrats and Republicans, and worked with the objective of reaching a deal and a compromise, should be commended. And that, and that you know, amidst everything else, they should be lifted up and, and uh, pointed to as, uh, you know, individuals who are making an effort, as is the President, to find compromise on the, kind of, the kinds of issues that only move forward if there's bipartisan cooperation. Peter. And then, yeah, sorry. For our bookkeeping <coughs> purposes, if today's the first day of the 30-day review. For your, what did you say, your booking purposes? Our bookkeeping oh, purposes, bookkeeping. yeah. <laughs> I thought you wanted to book an interview for 30 days from now. I appreciate it. Well, we'll do that as well if you want to commit. Thank you. But um, for, is, it, is it 30 days from now, and can you set a date by which the, the President is expecting to have the results or that you guys want to hear the results of this review? Well, uh, full transparency, the President, through the Secretary of uh, Treasury, has uh, insisted that the new acting commissioner in, conduct this top-down 30-day review. It is a fact that today is his first day on the job. And I think it's safe today, safe to say that that clock starts ticking today. I would refer you, obviously, to IRS and Treasury for, uh, you know, the, their specific timeline within that 30 days and what they expect uh, the end day to be. But as far as the President is concerned, Danny Werfel, the new acting commissioner, who is enormously qualified and has uh, experience under uh, administrations of both parties on these matters, uh, is getting to work today and ought to make this his top priority. Uh, on separate topics, so there's a UN nuclear agency report today that says that Iran has increased its capacity to refine uranium by installing hundreds more centrifuges. I just was hoping to get the White House's reaction to that. Uh, I appreciate the question. Um, I can tell you that I don't have. Uh, more specific information on that, except to say that we're reviewing the IAEA Director General's report, and we will uh, discuss how best to respond to it with other members of the board. But we're currently reviewing the report. Uh, it is uh, just released, as you said. Uh, on this matter, the fact that Iran is engaged in uh, continued pursuit of nuclear weapons is clear. We have uh, worked uh, assiduously with our international partners, as well as unilaterally to hold them accountable for their refusal to abide by their international commitments with regards to their nuclear ambitions. And we will continue to do that. We have instituted the most stringent sanctions regime in history, uh, a regime that has had a dramatic impact on Iran, uh, ha that has made clear uh, that uh, there is a significant cost to their flouting of their international obligations. Yeah, but I don't have... Yeah, that's why I posed Well, that. I mean, look, I, I, we are reviewing this report and we'll have a comment on it. We believe and we are engaged in a process uh, that we know that there is still time uh, for uh, Iran to make this decision to choose to abide by its international obligations. And we are working with the P5 plus one, which uh, put forward a substantial offer in Almaty uh, to bring that about. And now it's up to the Iranians to respond substantively to that proposal and to address the international community's concerns about the nature of its nuclear program. Peppering a, a variety of different thoughts now. Another headline made news today that an Army Sergeant First Class at West Point Military Academy has been accused of planning hidden cameras in the shower and locker room facilities of female cadets. Given the, what we heard recently from the President in terms of his uh, referring to those who commit these crimes as unpatriotic and the like. How involved is he in knowing about the specifics of individual events as there's now been a consistent line of new headlines mm -hmm. from around the I, country? I don't know about this specific report. I can tell you that the President is very focused on this, and, and you heard him, I think it was in the East Room, uh, when he addressed this, uh, make very clear that he has zero tolerance for uh, sexual assault in the military, and that he believes it is that those who participate in it, dishonor the uniform they wear, and that those who are victims of it and who wear the uniform uh, should know that the Commander-in-Chief has their backs, and he is insisting uh, that action be taken. He has met with Secretary Hagel about this. You have heard Secretary Hagel address this. Uh, this is a very serious matter, 
and uh, he finds it unconscionable and that there has to be action taken. And then just finally, if you can, what can you tell us right now about what we can anticipate in terms of tomorrow's National Defense University speech on counterterrorism? Is there any new guidance you can offer us? I, I think I went through yesterday uh, what uh, the, the sort of topic areas that you can expect the President to discuss. Uh, I think it, these, are, these are weighty, substantive matters. This is a speech that he has uh, looked forward to giving. It is one that he telegraphed in his State of the Union address. These are matters that, uh, in some ways similarly to the subject we were just discussing, he believes uh, are subject to legitimate questions and that, uh, they are, they are, that this is one, this is, these, are, these are issue areas that he believes uh, we need to be as transparent as possible about. And I think you'll see that reflected in his remarks yes, uh, we'll tomorrow. Hear from, we'll hear from him tomorrow then about what his plans are going forward. But I'm curious now, five years in after the President's pledge, before he came into office, that he would close Guantanamo Bay. What he blames for that not having occurred to this point? Some people, among, obviously, Congress has been an obstacle on this as well. But one of the things this administration did was shut down the office, the, the special envoy who was in charge of closing the prison at Guantanamo Bay, Cuba. And, I, and I'm curious if if that action has in some way contributed to this, the fact that Well, I certainly don't think that's an action that's contributed to uh, the fact that Guantanamo Bay is still open. And I think the President, you will hear the President discuss this subject, and I don't want to get ahead of the specifics. But, uh, you know, it is the President's view uh, that we should be determined, as he is, to see the Guantana Guantanamo Bay detention facility close. Keeping it open is not efficient, it's not effective, and it's not in the interest of our national security. And I think. Uh, Senior members of the military have testified to that fact. Uh, senior members of uh, uh, sort of the broader national security apparatus of both parties have, have uh, expressed that opinion. The President's predecessor has expressed that opinion. The President's uh, uh, opponent in the 2008 election, Senator McCain, has expressed that opinion. Um, the fact is Congress has enacted and renewed legislation in order to foreclose our ability to close the detention facility. Uh, the legislation restricts our experienced counterterrorism professionals from exercising their best judgment as to what the most appropriate disposition is for the individual still held there. Uh, the President is considering a range of options for ways that we can reduce the population there and move toward ultimate closure, some of which we can take on our own, but some of which, some of which will require working with the Congress, uh, which we hope will engage more productively on this process uh, in the future than it has in the past. Uh, to your point, I would say that one of the options is reappointing a senior official at the State Department to renew our focus on repatriating or transferring those detainees. Um, you know, we'll, I would uh, wait for the President's remarks for, uh, for a fuller view of uh, uh, this important issue. So that's an option, but not an option. Yes, ma'am. State is in the Middle East today and he is going to discuss the new effort to restart Israeli Palestine peace negotiation. Is the Obama administration hopeful on Kerry's effort? Do you think that his fourth time trip will uh, have to reduce differences between both sides? I think you saw uh, from the President's visit uh, and the immediate follow up by Secretary Kerry and uh, his follow-ups thereafter, that we are focused on this issue and that we uh, are looking for progress from both sides. And uh, I wouldn't characterize our level of optimism because this is a difficult and challenging issue uh, and has been for decades. Uh, but we believe that there is an opportunity uh, to move forward in the peace process, and it requires both sides to be willing to negotiate directly uh, on the issues that remain unresolved. Uh, and we are engaging uh, in that process, uh, but it certainly requires both sides to be willing to engage as well. Chris. Chris. Uh, thanks, Jay. I want to go back to immigration reform. Senator Leahy yesterday withheld amendments uh, that would have included gay couples as part of the larger package. Yesterday, the Associated Press reported that the White House had asked him to hold off on those messages. Did the White House, in fact, ask Senator Leahy to withhold those amendments? I think you heard the President address this issue. Uh, I think it was in an interview in Costa Rica. I think the President supports that amendment. Uh, and he also made clear that uh, you know, he knows he won't get everything necessarily that he wants in the final comprehensive immigration bill that he hopes the Senate will pass and the House will pass and will arrive on his desk. Uh, but he will push 
for those things that he believes ought to be in it. Uh, he thinks it's important that uh, we make sure that Every, everyone who's engaged in this process understands that, you're, you know, that they may not get everything they want. Uh, but I think he expressed very clearly his strong support for that amendment. Uh, he would hope that if it comes up uh, again that there would be strong bipartisan support for it. Uh, you know, and, and we'll have to see. But um, his support, I think he expressed very clearly. But that response doesn't really get to the issue of whether the White House has Senator Leahy to pull out well, of I don't have, uh, I, I don't have, I think you saw the, the manner in which it was uh, uh, discussed uh, in the hearing uh, by Senator Leahy, who introduced it, and other members of the committee who discussed it. Uh, we are obviously engaged in conversations uh, with the, the main players on this issue on a regular basis, and I don't have the contents of all those conversations. What I can tell you is that the President supports I'm sorry? I, I'm not aware of uh, that conversation. What I can tell you is the President supports the amendment. The President also believes, as he made clear in Costa Rica, uh, that uh, we need to uh, accept that, not, that we may not get everything we want. doesn't mean we're not going to fight for the things that we believe in, and this President will. Yeah, sure. Final question. Um, during the market last year, it was like one Democrat after the other uh, was uh, you know, Senator Feinstein, Senator Durbin, Senator Schumer, so they couldn't bring themselves to support the measure. And these are senators for the president's own party. Isn't there a reasonable expectation that the president should have worked to bring them on board with an attack for that vote in, in accordance with the decisions for in, in accordance well, with the I, immigration I, I think each senator expressed himself or herself in his or her own views, so I would refer you to them. Uh, you know, the president's views are clear. He believes this uh, amendment should be passed. Uh, and. Uh, you know, has made his views clear on that. I can't speak for other senators. Thank you, uh, Jared. Yeah. Jay, does the President's support of the Media Shield Law acknowledge any existing problems with media protections or any potential abuse of power that this administration or another administration might use? What I would say is the President believes we need a Media Shield Law because uh, we need added protections reflected in the Media Shield Law. And I would note that the negotiated bill uh, from 2009 had the support of media organizations and prosecutors. And that reflects, I think, the balance that the President seeks. I'm not suggesting that the Media Shield Law, uh, if it were to pass tomorrow and be signed into law uh, next week, would end the discussion or would solve uh, the, the challenges that this issue represents and contains within it. But he does believe that more needs to be done. That's why he has long supported a Media Shield law. Does he trace the need for the law to the Patriot Act? Does he trace it to something more ontological with press freedoms? Is there something? Uh, I, I, I confess that it would probably be uh, more fruitful if you look back at the statements he made as a senator when he supported a, a Media Shield law, which obviously was prior to his administration, uh, and to the st uh, statements that he and his administration made uh, when this uh, matter was up before the Senate in 2009 in terms of his, the origins of his concerns. And about the uh, speech tomorrow, Jay, uh, on the promise that the President made in the State of the Union on drones, does the President feel like he has been as transparent as he has promised to be since then in the intervening months? Uh, we, uh, on the issue of drone? Is the, I'm sorry. Yeah, targeted drones. Well, we have, uh, in a variety of forms, through senior members of the administration, from the President to the Attorney General to uh, John Brennan and others, uh, provided substantial amount of information and uh, had a number of substantive discussions about this issue. The President made clear uh, that he wants to expand that even further, that he believes that we need uh, to be as transparent about a matter like this as we can, uh, understanding that there are national security implications to this issue and to the broader issues involved in counterterrorism policy. That is why he, he is delivering this speech tomorrow, which will encompass a number of issues, uh, including some of the specifics uh, around uh, counterterrorism uh, execution and policy, as you uh, described, also Guantanamo Bay and other issues. Uh, but uh, this is a matter that, as I said before, and as the President has said, um, he thinks is an absolutely valid and legitimate an important area of discussion and debate and conversation, and that it is his belief uh, that there needs to be uh, 
there need to be structures in place uh, that remain in place for successive administrations uh, so that, uh, you know, in the, in the carrying out of counterterrorism pol uh, uh, policy, uh, you know, procedures are followed that, that um, allow it to be conducted in a way that uh, ensures that we're uh, keeping with our uh, traditions and, 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 and our laws. The April. Set the yeah. Bar very high. Has he met his own bar? Yeah, well, I, obviously, if you ask the president, I think he has uh, endeavored to meet that bar in, in keeping with the fact that he believes more information uh, rightfully should be disclosed. He's giving a speech tomorrow about it, uh, and I hope uh, everybody settles in. I expect it will not be brief. April. Yeah. yeah. Um, happy birthday, and on the thank you, April. You're welcome. Um, on the matter of the IRS, um, and it's a whole other issue. Mm -hmm. Um, has the president been updated on the delay in the federal tax refunds? Has he been told as to if the delay has <coughs> is, uh, ceased, is, are the refunds going out as planned? I, I don't know the answer to that question, uh, so I'll have to take it and get back to you. Are aware of the delay in the tax refunds? Uh, he, he may have been, April. I just don't know the answer, so I'll have to take that question. Did you comment on the terror attack in London and whether the president spoke to Cameron? Uh, I'm afraid I don't. I'll have to take the question, okay. uh, but we'll get back to you on it. Thanks yeah. all very much. Appreciate it.